Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And on this YouTube channel, I like to talk about failed aircraft. You know, like the 737 Max. Today, let's talk about a very, very important aircraft of aviation. A very, very successful one as well. And right in front of us, we have the DC-3. This one came out in 1930, and it's the most built airliner ever, ever. And when I say most built, I mean most built. 16,000 of these aircraft have been built. Now, yes, there are planes like the Cessna 172 as well, which have way higher numbers, but these are not commercial aircraft. The Douglas DC-3 is. Actually, there are still a few hundred DC-3s flying out there. Even though this aircraft is quite old, it came out in 1930, which you can tell by the design. As you can see, it doesn't have jet engines or... And also, the windows are not circles, but squares, which actually used to be a thing back then. You can also tell this plane's age by the cockpit. As you can see, we don't have any modern screens or anything, which kind of makes sense, right? Also, the cabin doesn't look very, very modern. I mean, it looks kind of spacious, actually, I think. Yeah, people used to have a lot more space in these planes, you know, especially when you look at, you know, Ryanair or something these days. But yeah, let's go ahead and take off this plane first. Something that we have to keep in mind is that this plane is a tail dragger, which means that it doesn't have a nose landing gear, but rather a tail landing gear. So taking off is a lot different. And also landing is a lot different. You land on the front wheels, which is something you don't traditionally do on on normal airliners, right? Or normal planes in general. Let's close the doors and let's go ahead and fly. Oh shoot, that is also a thing. Uh, yeah, I think I overstressed the engines a bit there and we caught fire, that's not good. Yeah, you have to be very, very careful with these engines, I forgot. All right, let's try again. Gentle, gentle. You always have to be a little bit gentle with these golden, golden aircraft from the golden era. This is not the longest runway. I think we will make it though. Oof, what is going on? Jesus Christ. We can soon rotate. There we go. We are off the ground. Isn't that nice? By the way, the speed is measured in miles per hour, as you can see down here. I don't like that, but we are flying. We we are just casually flying. That's great. Gear is retractable at some point. Yes, it is. But it doesn't really get high or anything, but it's better than nothing. And we are just casually flying. Now, something people are always worried about when they fly is when they suddenly don't fly anymore. And we all know back in the days, planes were not very safe, were they? And that also applies to this plane. There have been quite many crashes, but every plane had that in the 1930s, so you know. And we have that right now. Our engines are Oh damn, those are some broken engines. Or at least the props are kind of not in good shape. Let's try landing in the ocean or something. <laughs> yeah, this add-on plane for this flight simulator is really great for simulating failures. This plane was basically just made for this YouTube channel. Everything is very detailed. But actually for that era, this plane was quite safe still. It was safe enough. Or at least we can say that it was reliable, especially more reliable than other aircraft. Also, it could fly higher and faster than other aircraft of around that time. You know, it was kind of like when Apple came out with the iPhone. It kind of changed the aviation world, especially the commercial aviation world. You know, airliners started making money with this plane, which was something that they didn't do before, actually. And so, not only rich people could fly, actually medium rich people could fly as well. And now we have Ryanair. All right, let's try landing this one. Yeah, this plane is quite a good glider. It glides like butter through air. I think we could have definitely returned to the airport, but that would have been boring. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, this plane can seat around 30 passengers, which also is quite an amount for that time. I mean, this plane is almost 100 years old. There we go. Or not. There we go. We have finally landed. And now this plane has turned into a boat. Oh, wow. It's actually sinking, isn't it? That cannot be good. I hope it... Yeah, I hope evacuation is quick enough. You know what? Let's try landing this plane properly now. You know, as I've already said, landing is quite an interesting business with these tail draggers. Now, a question that I've seen many people asking is, why were they so many DC-3s built? Why did they build so many? Who ordered so many? Now, first of all, this plane was also used in military 
military, the US used a lot of these planes. And if you know the US military, you know that they just like to own a lot of planes. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. I mean, just 10,000 orders alone came from military, which is just crazy. You know, also back in the days, these planes were not really that expensive. I mean, this plane with inflation today cost around a million dollars, which is not super much for a plane after all. And these planes also crashed a lot. So there were just a lot more of these around. You know, out of these 16,000 build, probably 6,000 or more crashed. Let's try landing this plane first though. Oh my goodness, touchdown sometime. Ouch. Yeah, you really have to get used to landing on the on the tail. Oopsie. Yeah, that was just for uh, demonstration purposes, I promise. Yeah, I've, I've seen better landings, right? I don't even want to know how many times something like this happened. <laughs> and yes, if you want to fly a real DC-3, then there is hope for you. There are quite a lot of vintage airlines still flying this plane. There are just a lot of museums also operating this plane. You can find this plane a lot at air shows as well, so you can see the DC-3 in real life still. Again, there are still, I don't know, maybe even thousands of DC-3s flying around, especially for military. There's just a lot of them still. No, maybe this time our landing will be better, right? Oh goodness. Oh, or maybe not. Whatever this landing was, I don't know. It kind of seemed like a crosswind landing or something, but there is no crosswind. I don't know what's wrong with this. Oh. Now, now, later on, the DC-3 was mostly replaced by planes like the Super Constellation. And if not, it was definitely replaced by jet airliners, which became a thing around 20 years after this plane came around. And we have broken just another DC-3. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.